Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton and welcome to my oil painting class today. Uh, today we're going to do a scene from uh, Grand Tetons uh, National Park and uh, has some water, little waterfalls, it has uh, some mountains in the background. And I have a uh, toned canvas here, 11 by 14, as you can see. And uh, there's a slight sketch on there, a small sketch on there that you might be able to see. Um, it's pretty light. You really don't need a sketch if you have a good uh, photograph to work from. So uh, I'm uh, going to get this thing started. Uh, I want to tell you first about the, the brushes. We're going to use the uh, standard Bob Ross brushes. Take my camera set here. There we go. Um, standard Bob Ross brushes that uh, have a one inch blender landscape brush. We have a uh, number three fan brush. We have a uh, filbert that I've added to the standard Ross palette, a number 10 filbert. I also have a number 12 flat that I may use. I also have a uh, number two script liner that I use and I will use the standard uh, Bob Ross palette knife in this painting. So. Uh, that's the brushes and uh, let's talk about the paints. Standard Bob Ross paints as uh, you may know already but I'll give them to you again. Uh, Bob, uh, This starts with titanium white. I have added an ultramarine violet here which comes from Grumbacher. Um, Bob Ross palette doesn't have a, a violet that's quite like this so rather than mix my own violets all the time I will use that periodically. I have the uh, Thalo Blue, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Lizard Crimson, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and Bright Red. I may not use all these colors, but at least that's the standard palette that uh, we have all the time, and those are available to me. So um, I will get going here very quickly, and uh, I want to start out with... Uh, putting on some liquid white. Um, Bob Ross typically paints his entire canvas liquid white. I don't always do that every time. It sort of depends on the particular painting. Uh, this one I want to have a nice soft blended sky so I'm going to go ahead and put the liquid white up here uh, which will help the paint move around a lot and uh, give me that ability to get a nice soft blended sky up here at the top. Uh, which is really uh, one of the features of most Bob Ross paintings. Skies are very soft and beautiful and a lot of it is because of this liquid white that he puts under under these paintings that uh, make it so easy to blend colors in and uh, using his his paints which are tend to be a little bit um, not as soft, I guess they're, uh, they're they're more firm than traditional paints that you might buy from Grumbacher or whomever. Um, and uh, so we'll put that there. I'm going to put a little bit down here in the area that's going to be the um, waterfall, just to lighten it up and uh, have some areas for movement of the water also helps me remember that where that waterfall is going to be and uh, and I'll just clean the brush out down here there's not much uh, I have some paint to put on but I'll just uh, sort of fill it out like this okay that is enough of that liquid white and uh, we're ready to get going on the, uh, the sky so for the sky I'm going to use a very light coat this particular uh, painting has a lot of clouds in the sky so I'm going to put a light coloring of blue in here and uh, it's going to keep it very light. Just something like that. Um, there's a bit of um, light red in here it looks like to me. Um, I'm gonna. These colors are very, very potent, and uh, doesn't take very much of them to uh, 
over override everything else in the canvas. It's a little bit too much red maybe, so I'll just add some white. Lighten it up a little. Putting in a few clouds here, over here, there's some clouds in this area. Um, giving it a sort of a pink or a purplish cast. Circular strokes. Um, I'm going to put just a touch of midnight black. I still haven't cleaned the brush out. Um, keeping it very, very uh, light. Under here we're going to have some shadows that are sort of a grayish color. So I'm still using this big old uh, one inch blender brush, but uh, it makes some very nice soft clouds over here on the left. There's just a little bit darker clouds over here. They actually even come down over the mountain. I may have to put those in after I put the mountain in. And I'll come back and put a little more white on top of some of this to show we've got some clouds in here. It's not looking exactly the way I want it, but let's see. Okay, now I'm going to dry this brush off. I'm not washing it out yet. I'm just drying it. And I'm going to give it a slight horizontal, very, very soft. Something like that. Okay, let me see. Give myself some of these uh, lighter clouds. I'm going to get my filbert brush out already and start putting in some uh, few more darks in here to kind of highlight the bottoms of these clouds, make them stand out a little bit. Just taking midnight black and just sort of putting in some dark colors here. If it gets too dark, you can always push on it and rub the uh, rub it out because it uh, will actually pick up that liquid white that's under there and uh, lighten it up. Try just a little of it, yeah. This red really makes a nice... There's some sun shining out here so the clouds have a little pink in them, a little gray underneath them. Uh, let's put a little bit of white on top of this to kind of make it stand out some more. And I'm going to take my big brush and go back over this one more time and give it a nice soft brushing. That's about enough I think of that. Get my big blender, number one inch blender, dry it off. I haven't washed it so I don't have any more thinner on it, but I've got it dried off. I'm just going very, very lightly skim over these. You see that nice soft color that it leaves. That's what I want right there. Okay. All right, so much for that. I think we're going to call that sky a bit too dark in there. So if it's too dark, I can just keep going over it, lightening it up. All right, I think that'll do for the sky. Now I'm going to start on this one mountain. These mountains in the distance um, are uh, sort of a, a light purple or bluish color. And uh, I think I'm going to pick a little bit of this ultramarine violet I have here. Pick a little white mix with it. And using the palette knife now to uh, get this little bit of paint on my brush. And in the distance back here, I'm leaving room here for a big pine tree to come up, but over here I got some mountains that I want to put in that are sort of lavenderish in color. They have a little blue in them. Combination of this ultramarine lavender and uh, phthalo blue and white. It was this sort of this distant mountain color here. There's a couple of them back there. They're off in the distance. Something like this. Very 
be soft back there. This mountain in here has got some of this color in it, but it also has some darker colors. I'm going to make it go up, add just a little bit of black and maybe a little bit of Van Dyke brown for this top. Like this. It's a little more rounded than that. Actually, the Tetons mountains have this interesting shape that's pretty distinctive, actually. That's probably a little too pointed, so I'll just add a little more paint here and see if I can round it out just a little. The sun, in this case, is coming from the left, so the right side of these mountains should be a little darker than the left side. In here, it's a little bump, it kind of sticks up over here like that. All right. Picking up some of these colors, a little bit of the lavender, a little bit of the black. I'm just going to pull down here to give myself a nice edge here. And I'll come back with a brush and can fine tune that a little more. But uh, right now I want to just get it in, get it on the canvas. Some blue that's a little too dark. I'm sort of mixing up the color here so that it's not all the same color. I don't want it to be so dis so distinct that it looks like the mountain's coming forward. I want that mountain to stay back there, so this has to be somewhat lighter and softer in the distance. Okay. All right. Okay. Got trees down here in the bottom, so I'm going to just leave that the way it is. Now on this left side over here, the mountain is a little bit darker because it's a little bit closer. So we make, we're going to pick up some colors to try to make it a little darker here. Lavenders and browns and some dark sienna. Let's see what that does for us over here. As long as this mountain in front is darker, the color doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be darker. So you can see I've added some lavender in here, or that violet color rather. Um, Just vertical streaks coming down. These mountains sort of fade out. They've got a little green in them actually as they come forward. I'm going to put a little sap green in here as we start coming up this way. And I'll do some work on the top of that to make those look like trees back there. Put this on as a base color. And just sort of bring it down. There we go. Okay. 
So that's all been done with the knife, and uh, it's only taken us about 15 minutes to get that much done. So we're moving pretty good pace here. Okay, I think I can do the rest of that with the fan brush and the filbert, and uh, that will be enough for that for now. Clean off my palette knife. Let me get this fan brush out here. All right, now I am using the uh, number three fan brush. I'm going to go back to the tops of these uh, trees here in the distance, and uh, by using this fan brush, I'm going to start a put in some marks here that look like we have some trees growing in the distance. Basically just vertical strokes here. Very, very light. Um, and they're a little darker than what's behind them, so they sort of stand out. So it looks like a uh, stand of trees in the distance. I'm just kind of running across here, changing the colors, mixing it up. Don't keep them all the same color. Add some darks. I put a little black in there, a little bit of Van Dyke brown. Mix them up. Over here, they kind of go up this way. And I will put another layer of trees in there, but I want to get some of this, uh, take a little bit of liquid white on the brush now. And if we come in here and just sort of touch in the bottom, we can stipple in this sort of a foggy, fogginess at the bottom of these trees. And that will help us in putting another layer on because the next layer will be a little darker. Be able to see that. Uh, a little more liquid white over here. Some of this and this mountain over here has some foggy areas. Another way to do that is to use the uh, landscape brush and sort of come in here and just stipple in. Stippling is like pounding. Bob Ross is noted for this pounding effect on his canvases. And usually when you have liquid white underneath, that will pull the liquid white forward. In this case, we don't have liquid white underneath right here. We had it in the sky, but not here. So I'm having to put liquid white on top and push it in, which works about as well as the other way. So, so I'm just sort of making this distance look very soft and fuzzy. Okay, let's leave that for now. Come back and get our fan brush again. I'm going to get a little darker color, put a little more blue, dark blue, phthalo blue, and a little black. And another row of trees is going to come down here in this area. And I'll make some bigger and some smaller, make some wider and some narrower. I uh, just want to make it look like there's a, another row of trees in here. Again, I'm just pushing the brush in. Taking this fan brush and using the sharp edge of it. If you get enough paint in it, you'll have a very thin brush. And when you push that on the canvas, it makes these nice little points. Whether you're making a pine tree up close or one in the distance, it gives these very neat effects. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get a little green in here. Um, this comes down. It gets a little wider in here, actually, in this area. So it's sort of a greenish blue color. And I'm just pounding it in again. Okay, now, still haven't washed this brush out yet. Um, we'll get some lavender in here and sort of make another row of trees that sort of come right down to this water edge. This is the water's edge back there, and it's very dark. So 
I want to make it look like there's a distant stand of trees. These are going to be pretty much violet in color. Same technique pretty much. Um, taking this fan brush, getting a nice load of paint in it, and just stamping it. Like this. Change the colors up. Pull some up. Go from dark blues to blacks. And we're making another row of trees back there in the distance. We're going to have a, another darker set of trees go right along here. But these I want to get in. And it's really the tops is what tells you what the top of these trees is what tell you what they are. The, uh, any object you put on the canvas works the same way in all oil paint or all mediums. The edge of the shape tells the viewer what you're looking at. So if the top of that looks like a pine tree in the distance, that's what the viewer will think you have in the distance is a pine tree. I'm going to darken the bottom of this here where it touches the water. I'm taking another technique where you get dark color in the brush, load it up, and then just flick upwards. Take the water's edge and just flick up. Put a nice little dark base under it. Okay, that's that row of trees. Now I've got another row that starts getting more green. I'm going to clean this fan brush out for the first time. I have not cleaned out any brushes yet. I've got a filbert that's still dirty. I have a big landscape brush that's still dirty and I've just now cleaned this, this fan brush out and I'm going to get me some sap green and uh, mix it in with a little bit of these brown colors here and uh, a little bit of ochre. Ochre and green, ochre and black make ochre and black make a nice um, olive color. So now I've got a different color in my brush. I'm going to start back here and start putting in another row of trees that are slightly in front of these trees behind them. They're a little bit browner, have a little more ochre in them. And uh, so it's just uh, another set of trees back here in the distance. And they sort of run up the mountain this way. Darks, lights, mix it up. Don't use the same color all the time. Okay. So over here we're going to fill it in with some other colors, but right now I'll just leave it like that. We have a lot of trees in here that sort of come along this bank. Some of them are darker, some are lighter. Use ochre. Ochre will lighten it up, make it look lighter. Some big trees over here. So there's a mixture of blues and violets and ochres and browns, and greens. So I'm painting from top to bottom, back to front. Okay, now on the left side, I've got a little bit of this cloudiness on the left side that actually covers the mountain. I'm going to take my landscape brush, wipe it out. I still haven't put any thinner in it, so I haven't cleaned it. Take some liquid white. And over here where these clouds sort of come over, get just a little black in there to gray it up just a little. But I want to just put in some cloudiness over here that looks like it's sort of covering these 
these mountains over here. They're just sort of in the clouds, if you will. Get some more white. Try to blend it in with the sky. <laughs> And uh, make this look very foggy over here, if we can. Okay. Whoa, got a little dark up there. Doesn't like that. Always fix it by putting a little more white on top of it. <laughs> okay, that's probably good enough. Let's blend that out just a little. If that works, dry out the brush and touch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's supposed to look like it's all sort of in fog over there. Okay, this area down here, um, below that, line of trees is another. I'm going to put in a little bit of liquid white just to help my paint flow better through this area. I notice when I paint it over there that it's a little bit too dry. So maybe I should have done what Bob Ross does and cover the whole canvas and paint in white, liquid white. But if you have a sketch, it's hard to see your sketch once you put liquid white over it. So kind of take it in stages, put a little bit here and there where I need it, and as I go back over this now, I'll be able to get some nice um, trees. I'm going to go to the other side and sort of paint this in a little bit too, because I want to get some nice movement in the paint over here. So I'm just going to basically, this is liquid white. So I'm putting a base coat of this liquid white on here that's going to let it uh, let the paint flow better and it will cover the canvas better as well okay that's good enough for right there let's leave that and come back and get our big brush okay so we're getting some interesting effects on this painting in the background this is all background work I'm doing And uh, I'm going to start in with this, get my fan brush out again. Fan brush is uh, really good for these pine trees. And I'm going to use a series of uh, um, yellows and ochres in some of these trees and uh, see how that looks on this left side. Um, there's sun coming from the left, so I'm going to pick up my ochre and my Indian yellows. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, dark sienna in there to give me some reddish color. If that doesn't give me enough reddish color, I'll add some alizarin crimson, which will give me more red. So I'm sort of making a little series of colors here on my palette to see what the yellows blending into the, the browns and the reds. So over here in this area, we've got some very nice trees that sort of stand out right in here. Start with this, bring them down. As they come down, if I add a little blue, I'll start picking up some green, right? That's what I want to do in some of these areas. Um, make sure I have the lay of this land right. This is going to come down and that's probably enough. These have to come down this way. Okay, there we go. So let's just put in some nice trees up here. I'm still pounding in using this uh, fan brush. Ochres, a little bit of green, a little bit of sap green, some blues. Uh, mixing up the colors, getting a little orange in some places with uh, using some bright red here. Uh, some of these trees have a little reddish tint to the left side where the sun's hitting. Um, but there's just a lot of pine trees on this cliff. It's kind of like a cliff that's on the left side of this 
waterfall. So let's just keep putting them in here. Okay. Mix up the colors. Get uh, get some darks in there. And uh, throw in some bright yellows here and there. If you put some yellow over that over a bluish color, over a greenish color, it'll really brighten it up and make it stand out. So just fine tuning this. They kind of come down almost all the way to the water's edge there on the left on the right on the left side of this bank. The right side of the left bank is what I want to say. Okay, I'm sticking in some darks at the bottom, going back, re-stippling. And uh, so that paint flows a lot smoother with that liquid white on there. Um, and I want to put in now some things that look like trees in that distance. So I'm going to get my uh, script liner, get a little bit of uh, different colors of paint. There's uh, some grays like uh, sort of dead um, trees. Sometimes these trees out in the west they have this sort of a grayish look when they die. So I'm going to put a couple of those out here. Go back and get clean paint and that paint picks up the paint that's underneath it and uh, will change the color on you. Something like that. Maybe put a few darker ones in there. I don't know. Make it look like a stand of trees in the distance. The other trick we can use is get our knife out. Using the, pal the palette knife, you can kind of come in here and with really no, not much paint on the palette knife at all and just put in some, scrape in some uh, trees that go this way. Try to keep them fairly straight for the most part if you can. Okay, not too much of that. All right, so that's those trees. Get my, my uh, fan brush back out. I'm going to put a a bit of a base, a sort of a yellowish blue or yellowish ochre base underneath this in this area. Here there's some rocks that sort of stick out and uh, I'm going to tie those trees to that. On top of that I'm going to put a little brown. This, this kind of comes down into the water like here. Something like that. So the brush strokes tell the eye what's happening with this land back there. Mixing up some darks and so these are all parts that jut out into this water in the distance. And this really comes down this way and keeps moving. We'll put a few more trees on top of that, but I want to get uh, get this laid in with some ochres and dark colors in some spots. Something like this, point it out there, make it make it horizontal. These all come down and some of it's fairly sharp. There's some sharp points here that stick out. Go back get some other color. I'm getting some Van Dyke Brown now to put down here. And it all moves up this way. So and basically the brush stroke tells the eye what's happening in this in this bank over here. So, I think it's coming across pretty well. Been going a little over 30 minutes. Um, 
probably close to half done maybe not quite that waterfall is going to take a little work but uh, I'll get me some lighter colors lighten up the browns change the color a little bit and keep working on this bank over here some other changes of color as we come forward if we just keep changing the color down here is where it's going to hit the bottom of the waterfall and then along here we're going to have some really dark sections to hold that waterfall in so that water doesn't spill out all over the place I'm just mixing up my colors could do this with a knife I've just chosen to use this fan brush since I had it handy and many ways to do these types of things but the brush strokes help tell the eye which way that land is going so if you can notice I want this to be horizontal here has to be very horizontal and dark because that's where it's touching the water. Okay, and there are some dark, dark uh, creases or crevices or whatever you want to call them in here in some of these rocks as they come down. Uh, there's some more trees up here, but these little these little shaded areas tell the, the eye that this is sort of a rocky coast, rocky set of land that has trees growing out. We're going to come and put some more trees on here, but right now that helps. All right, um, let's see, I'm going to clean out this brush again. Clean out a couple of brushes if I will. All right, let's see if we can put a few more trees on this. We're going to get some nice dark green. We'll use a little midnight black and sap green will give us a dark green. If I want it darker, I'll put a little bit of phthalo blue in it, and it really darkens up. So some of these trees now are getting closer to the middle ground or foreground. They need to be darker. So on this side over here, I'm going to have some trees that stand out and we need to make sure we have a lot of paint on the brush so this paint will stick oh, something there on the brush I didn't like but I'll fix that Lighten it up just a little and see if I can get some. So these trees need to have contrast. If, if you don't have enough contrast, they won't stand out from what's behind them. One of the reasons for the, the coloring here is to make sure they stand out. So there's some grasses here, I've got some trees. I'm just going back and forth. I'm still not cleaning this brush very much. Um, there's a little pine tree right there. Put in some So it's a uh, combination of a tree going up here like this. Get a real nice dark some little ones out there, little bitty trees floating around down here. So just mix it up a little bit. Try to give yourself a nice looking a 
nice looking landscape. Let me see. I'm going to get my filbert out here and work with it a little bit and see if I can change the some of those trees a little bit. I add a little more dimension to them. Using my uh, yellow ochre and a little bit of this uh, dark sienna, I start putting in some other bush-like objects here. Um, some blue. There's some darks. So make it dark at the bottom, light at the top. Trees. This uh, filbert will make some interesting trees as well if you just sort of stab it, stab it and pull it back. But you gotta have enough dark paint so that it stands out, otherwise you won't know what's, what's being painted there. Okay, let's see here. How are we doing? Take a little this. I see some reds in there. I'm going to pick up a little lizard and this dark sienna and see if I can get a little bit different color in this ground. And in here I see different colors that are sort of lighter, have some reds in them actually pinks. So I'm mixing that out of alizarin, dark sienna, and white. Sort of indicates there's some different color rock in there. Mix it up. Put some up here. Picking up a lot of the color that's underneath it. So I'm getting the green the brown. Might be some rocks in there that could be highlighted like this. They could have some dark sienna have some light tops on them and dark underneath. The sun is coming from the left, but some of this won't get too much sun down here on this part of the bank, so it actually is more in shade. So let's put some more rocks and a few things down here. Darker, I'm using Van Dyke for this. Maybe a little black even. Put a couple things that look like some trees in here. Spend a lot of time on this if you want to keep messing with it. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I do want it to look representative of the bank of a... It comes down into a Set area of water. So we get just nondescript stuff here, not too specific. There's some trees or rocks, who knows what they are. Down here at the very bottom, I want this to be very dark. So I'm going to push in some colors that make it look very dark and blend it upwards. These areas, they almost have a black look to them where it touches this water over here. So I pull those up like this, makes it look like we've got some rocky things going right down into the water, which is what that's supposed to represent. Okay, that's, I'll let that go for now. That's pretty good. I'll just stop on that. All right, now this right side, I want to go over here 
I'm going to use my filbert over there and uh, start using these yellows and uh, some blues. Don't need to have sap green. We've got two blues and two yellows. We can mix four or five different colors of greens with uh, just the yellows that we have and the blues that we have. So over here I'm going to start putting in a big old pine tree that sort of sticks up out here like this. A little bit different shape than the other ones. And some dark colors. I'm pushing out now, pushing out. Out and up. Changing the color, making it darker in some spots, lighter in others, bringing back the ochre in the middle, some browns, there's a lot of tree-like material back in here. And it's got all kinds of colors in it, darks and lights. Just pushing up, taking this filbert and just sort of pushing up and out and letting it sort of trail off. Over here, these trees are just a little A little more yellow in them. If I can get that color. So I'm making some similar shapes that you can make with this fan brush, but I'm using the filbert. I'm going to come back in and add some more darks. <clears throat> I even come back with my fan brush and put some darks over the top of that and then using this as a base sort of behind um, the trees. Dark, getting some blacks in there, grays. Use this as sort of an underpainting, if you will. Um, Liquid white helps this paint really go on. It lightens it up, of course, uh, but it does help it go on the canvas much smoother. <clears throat> okay, there's some nice texture behind those trees. If I come back with my fan brush now and uh, <clears throat> put some uh, darker colors on top of that. I think that's what I want to do now. Let's see if I can get some darker colors in here. Like right in here, I'm going to put in a few things that look like some other trees and some other branches coming down this way. I'm using some blues and lavender basically in this brush now. Horizontal marks make it look like they're bushing out in all directions. So, okay, 
Okay. I think maybe I can put in a few trunks in here that are a little lighter. I'll get my uh, palette knife here and put a little white in it and uh, get a color that's lighter than those dark tree backgrounds. And take a little roll of paint and see if I can touch in just a little, a little bit too much paint there. Mix it up darker, lighter. And some streaks that look like we got some trees going up here. Some too much paint right there. Let's see if I can pick it up. Still got too much. Okay. I'm not using the right technique with that. I'm pulling off too much paint. I would need a smaller roll of paint here. something like that and then come back with my fan brush and pick up some of these darker branches and put over these trees so they don't look like they're just glued on pieces of wood out there in here we're going to be darker at the bottom make some really dark stuff here at the bottom there we go all right, that looks like that's starting to come in line much better. You have to make mistakes to learn how to correct them. So I make my share of mistakes and it helps me learn how to fix them. So little trees over here. This is still more big cliff that comes down. So we got a lot of... Uh, work to do on that cliff. I'm going to start now by using some of my yellows and ochres over here. See if I can get a color that looks like the, the bank. And I want to start up here and start pulling down some a little too light maybe, but let's darken it down a little bit. There we go. Don't want blue in there right now. Stick with my browns and yellows. So we're getting an interesting set of shapes with the knife. I got an interesting set of colors back picking up these different colors of yellows all kind of yellows yellows uh, dark sienna cad yellow Indian yellow and uh, yellow ochre all giving me these interesting colors here coming down this mountain I turn a little bit of this into a browner color as we get toward the bottom up some white there. Don't need it, but it's not going to hurt. So at the bottom, this is going to have to be darker. So we have a similar situation on the right side where the the uh, there's these has these creases that sort of tell the eye you've got this thing coming down this way. There's some marks in it that look like that. I'm just putting in some things with the knife um, to make it look like there's some. So it looks like that's sort of coming down. You want to make that the either the knife mark or the brush stroke needs to show that that's coming down to a darker area down here. It's closer to the water. 
and is actually so dark it's going to be have this dark color in it down here where it touches the water. All right, so I've just got a mixture of colors here, nothing specific, but I've used the blues, the, or not the blues, I've used the yellows, all three yellows, used the uh, midnight black, used some phthalo blue in some cases, a little purple or lavender, or violet, whatever. I have to find me some more black here. Here we go. Need just a little more black. I'll just pop it up here. Let's see if I'm in the right place. Yes. Black. All right. The black will help me get the bottom of this better color. There we go. So if I put this in like this, darken it up, use my knife and sort of pull up. I can get my filbert and maybe do a better job with this, but I'll start right now with just skimming the knife over it, up and over. Something like that. Okay. Stop on that for now. I want to make sure that green grass at the top comes down over that rock that I just put in. It kind of looks like it's all connected right now. It looks like it's uh, not clear what's happening there. So I'm going to sort of put in some blending here to make it look like this is grass is sort of growing over like that. Yeah, a little better changing from a rocky or from a grassy area to sort of a rocky surface here that has some very distinct rocks and got some trees down here. Got some crevices that make it look like it's in shadow, which it would be in this case. So we'll make this a little darker. All right, let's There's a rock here that sort of juts out, comes up and connects with this. Okay, so that's all done. So I've got my room left for the waterfall in the middle. And uh, I think I'm uh, at a point where I may want to take a short break and clean out my brushes. We've been going for about 60 minutes. So let's take a break and uh, come back and finish this little job up. We've got probably another maybe as much as 30 minutes left on it. It's going to take a little longer than I thought, but it's got a lot of detail in it and uh, has some very interesting uh, shapes and a lot of objects, a lot of trees, and a lot of rocks. And we're just getting ready to start with the water here very shortly. So let's take a break and I will be back in a few moments. Okay, we're back and uh, got my brushes cleaned out and got myself a drink of water and uh, about ready to go here. So let's uh, see if we can start on this background now. We've got this area back here. This is a little bit too wide. I need to have a little more of the land back here. So I'm going to put myself in some, uh, a little bit of land back there with a knife under these trees. So I'll taper it this way if I can. That uh, 
I need to have to and make it just a little narrower back here. So I'm just sliding in the knife, putting in some horizontal streaks, and uh, it might be all I need back there. Not too much, but I want to pull it together a little closer. So I'm going to get my filbert, and I'm going to get some uh, white paint here, and uh, some blue, a little bit of blue, the distance it's uh, not as blue as it is gray but I'm going to put some start putting in some blue in here in the middle ground I guess it is It'll be just a little hard to make it work here maybe some white in it and keep cleaning the brush out because it picks up that paint that's on the canvas this side on the left is going to be just slightly darker because it is a little bit in the shadow from the mountains on the left so let's just make it that way some dark spots here that can make some ripples over this up on the right side I can always do that with my with my uh, palette knife the colors up here as well. I don't want this to be all one value of blue. I want it to have lights and darks. water is pretty much coming level and flat to just about this point. This is where it starts hitting the rocks and starting to tumble forward. There are rocks back in there and I'm going to probably put a few more dark spots to indicate that. May even throw a few rocks in there. But these dark streaks will give us the What's, what's needed to be underneath here. There's also some dark rocks that kind of float down in here like this, at least down to the bottom. There's some rocks in here like this. I just picked up a little black on my brush. I'm just sort of putting it over this liquid white. We'll have some foaminess that comes in. This is really pretty, pretty foamy. Okay, the way we make the, the way we make the um, waterfall look. Just putting some darks back here to represent some rocks that are sitting back here. All this will we'll come in with a fan brush with some white 
and we'll put some nice little very interesting waterfall marks over this. So this is all blue, should be blues and lavenders and a little darker back there. Some water in here. Clean the brush. Keep that brush cleaned out because that picks up the paint that's on the canvas. Get that colored in. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're getting some nice blue stuff in there, looking pretty good. Okay, just fan brush, or using this filbert to put all this in. There's a couple of rocks down here on this foreground left side that I want to put in with a knife as sort of the finishing touches, but right now I'm just painting the, the water that's going to go in around behind it. Okay, so down to here is the bottom of our waterfall. All right, now let's take the fan brush, put that filbert in, let it be soaking to clean up a little bit. And the fan brush, I'm going to get some combination of liquid white and titanium white here, sort of thin it down. But these waterfall marks should be done with this fan brush, if we can make it work. I'm going to come back here first and touch in some some marks that look like rippling water. Just let it pull off of the fan brush what it will. And as you start coming forward, you start making these little downstrokes. And those downstrokes are what make it look like there's rocks and ripples. Rocks and ripples underneath. A lot of churning going on. This brush picks up all that blue, so you have to keep going back getting more paint. In here I want to make this sort of go over those rocks there like this. At the bottom make it frothy if you can. So these strokes now are coming down the face of the waterfall. I'm going to make sure that we have this showing. A lot of movement, a lot of 
frothiness here. So here they come down and it's this little guy and comes over like that and bounces, splashes out into here, puts them all the way back up into here because it helps define that rockiness there. little ripples and then it sort of blends out okay Got little ripples everywhere yeah, it's pretty close Lighten this up a little bit. A little gray in that. So the grays help show some shadows. Just touching a little midnight black in there. Okay. Don't have to do much more than that. That's uh, pretty good. I've got a few more old trees and I've got some rocks down the foreground I want to throw in and we'll be done with this job. Down here in the foreground I've got some rocks that are sort of gray. So take my midnight black. Make sure it's darker than what's behind it. Sort of put in some things that look like this. These rocks sort of jet out like this. Something like that. And there's some other rocks and things down here. I'll put that in as a base and then come back with my other brushes and sort of fine-tune it but these rocks need to look something like that probably don't have to do a whole lot more maybe I'll just put in a few more dark spots in here to give it some depth show there's some crevices and that sort of stuff underneath a shadow dark shadow underneath this right here if I can get it in there something like that a little dark shadows under there the shadows help define this is a three-dimensional fooling of the eye that we're doing here I think there we go Pretty good. That's a little bit like that. Maybe a few more little things over here, but that's good enough. I think I'm going to stop with that. I'm not either. I'm going to put in one more little tree here that I think helps the composition. There is a tree that sort of sticks out here. I'm getting my fan brush, getting some. Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna, and there's a little tree that sort of sticks up here like this. Something like that. And he's got a bunch of sort of almost like an orange. It's a uh, probably a dead tree, but it's got some of this bright red in it. And he's got these little things coming in from the side here like this. bright brighter there's that one there's actually another one up there that's I might as well put in 
It goes up this way, like this. Where's my dark, dark, dark? Let's put it in with a knife. Might make it dark enough, maybe. Treat it so it goes up here like that. And try the fan or the Filbert Brown. See if I can make the, uh, the right colors on it up here. Yeah, it's got a bright yellow look. There we go. Okay. There's a little trees and marks in here. Go back and get me some little trees like this that in here. Yeah, that'll finish it up okay. Not too much more here. Bear with me. Something like that. They have these little trees that sort of <clears throat> grow on this rock face. And uh, I think that's going to do it. <clears throat> Let me look one more time. Kind of connect that so that it's not standing up there by itself. This needs to be connected. Okay, I think I'm going to stop and uh, let you work on that. Um, okay, I think that's going to be it for today. And uh, glad you joined me. And uh, if you can attend our next painting class please do so. It's going to be on March 16th. This is a Saturday, and uh, we'll be meeting from 1 to 5. And if you can't make our class, please try this on your own, and uh, let me know how you do. You can also subscribe to YouTube, and uh, I will send you an email every time I post a new painting. So maybe you want to try that. And until um, I see you again, uh, keep painting and have fun. So long.